Fantastic ideas, everyone. One last question. Let's go back to that personal connection. The theme of the International Year of the Cooperative is cooperative enterprises build a better world. What's one thing that you are looking forward to seeing in this better world that's coming? I'm personally looking forward to a real cultural shift in our, in our country uh, and around the world about environmental practices. And I'm also hoping that cooperatives can become a part of this conversation about the disparity of, of wealth and, and distribution of wealth. And I think here in this country, especially in the political climate that we're looking at right now, class warfare is becoming a part of the conversation in a, in a not so constructive manner. If cooperatives can, can get into that conversation and turn it into a more constructive place, I think that that would be enormous an enormous shift that our children, my grandchildren, and their grandchildren are going to benefit from. So personally, I'd like to see that happen. <laughs> um, one thing, well, or, I think or two or I, three. Yeah, yeah, I've been reading some uh, historical fiction about the late 1800s and the labor movements and the anarchists and their efforts to change the robber baron economy to something that the work that's provided more support to the workers so I'm, I'm a bit radicalized at the moment but I'll, uh, I'll take a stab at that uh, I really do believe though that co-ops have the ability to help um, provide better more meaningful work to people and opportunities for people that are often neglected by uh, the more traditional investor economy um, invest, investment in, in corporations that don't respond to the local needs. A lot of people are questioning whether that is still a valid model and, or, and how we can find an economy and a lifestyle that is more meaningful to people and where corporations aren't the people that elect the government, but you know people have, have regained their voice. And, and in organizing co-ops, one of the things that we see all the time is that we're not just organizing a co-op. We're or, where we are organizing a cooperative store. We're also organizing a cooperative of people, and that is an organization, a grassroots organization that builds social capital in the community, and it, and empowers people to to do more things of the same nature. They, to go out there and really, uh, they become a new part of their community, more involved, more active and uh, leaders for other folks as well. So um, that, that's where I would like to see the co-op community continuing to make its impact. That's a, that's a great question. We actually are launching a project as part of the International Year called Stories.coop. And this is an opportunity for cooperatives to tell their story. They'll be able to, we'll be crowdsourcing stories, we'll be seeking some out. And we intend in this through this website, we'll pick one story a day, 366 stories next year because it's a leap year as it turns out. And we will feature a different cooperative every, every day. And through the course of those 366 stories, the public will see the regional diversity, they'll see the sectoral diversity, they'll see the, the diversity in terms of size and scale of cooperatives, and they'll have a true sense of how it is that cooperatives are building a better world, how collectively that happens. It's very different in, uh, in, in different parts of the world. And in some cases, there are some very inspiring stories about worker cooperatives, people who would be starving if it weren't for this opportunity to come together and share the production resources in a worker cooperative. In other cases, it's the sustainability. It's the fact that, that we're keeping the environment from being destroyed by the way in which we approach the production of food or the production of goods and services. It's a different story, it's a complex story, and it's one that people will begin to get the full flavor of through this stories.coop site. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think that the economy, uh, as it is today, driven by uh, the profit motive and only by the profit motive, makes uh, our world um, often a very sad place that the people who have a lot of money uh, and are able to invest and use their capital and the capital gets rewarded, um, they just continue to get richer and the people who don't have resources continue to get poorer. And as long as our society is based on rewarding capital, 
um, instead of rewarding participation, that gap between the rich and the poor, um, I, I can only imagine that it would continue to grow. I think that leads to a lot of problems in, in our society, uh, a lot of frustration with um, uh, people who aren't able to, to provide enough for their families. And so I think a change in the, in the way business runs, uh, the way the economy functions so that it's more important, or at least equally important, what happens to people, and what happens to the planet as it is to make profit. Especially in America, we have lost our way in understanding how we own the things that we hold in common whether that be our local park or a national park, we've lost a conversation about how we act together as civil society through government, as well as non-government, to own the things that we hold in common and to effectively govern ourselves. There is much that the cooperative community, well-practiced, could teach or remind us in civil society about how to um, uh, deal with diverse visions, to um, use democratic process, to engage in thoughtful, healthy debate, that, and then ultimately leading to effective solutions to our, our shared problems. And the thing that I think the, the, the biggest contribution that I would love to see is a renewed understanding of, of democracy practiced economically as well as politically uh, in a very true and genuine way. And I think that's something that would be a great contribution if uh, if that could be brought to pass. Well, I the the contributions that cooperatives have made to give people a power and voice around the world are well documented. And personally, I like to see in this country is a a uh, outreach uh, that would be focused on recent immigrants to this country to help them assimilate uh, better into the economy in our society and I'm thinking specifically of people who are immigrating here uh, from you know Latin American countries that we use uh, the cooperative business model as a way to integrate people into the economy better uh, so that they can take advantage of, uh, of, of our society and our way of life. And so my, my goal is that uh, we can use the International Year uh, to reach out to recent immigrants uh, and, and use it as a way to improve their lives because if that happens, then our country and our society will, be, will benefit. Thank you all again for sharing your insights, wisdom, and perspectives here today. Well, clearly we could probably spend all day discussing co-ops and still have plenty more to share and learn about our co-op connections. But our time for today is up. Hopefully we can get together again in 2012 for another roundtable on issues of interest to our co-ops. Once again, I'd like to extend a special thank you to our panelists. We are honored that you joined us. Paul Hazen, NCBA. Charles Gould, ICA. Robin Schrader, NCGA, Stuart Reed, Food Co-op Initiative, Marilyn Scholl, CDS Consulting Co-op, and Kevin Edberg, Cooperative Development Services. On behalf of CDS Consulting Co-op, I'd like to extend my thanks to everyone for being with us today, and we always welcome your feedback. This recording and our entire library of resources is available online as part of our C-Build library at cdsconsulting.coop or just search online for Seabuild Library. Thanks again for taking part in Co-op Connections. Have a great Co-op Month and fantastic Year of the Cooperative.